first, um, Jihi is going to start practicing with us. However, he will not play in games until next year. And uh, you know, we're really glad that he'll have the opportunity uh, to be, be together with us on a daily basis now in practice. Uh, I think that'll be really good for him as well as for our basketball team. And so I can finally give you, uh, you know, a final uh, status report on Jaheim. Anybody have any questions? Herb, how deflating is this knowing that so many people around the program, including yourself, are counting on him to be a factor for this squad this year? Well, I'll tell you what, right now we're just thrilled that he's able to uh, start practicing with us. I think that's a real positive. Get him involved with the team. Uh, he's going to be with us on a regular basis now in practice, and so I'm looking at that as a real positive. And then, um, you know, we'll look forward to having him, um, you know, next season for games. But right now, I think that's a real important step in the right direction. He will start next season as a sophomore, correct? Um, technically, I think he, he'll start as a sophomore, but. He will have the opportunity to have four years of eligibility. So, um, in some respects, he'll be a freshman, although technically he may have to be listed as a sophomore until that last year. And I could be mistaken about the details of that, but I, that's my understanding of how it works. I was going to ask you about the details. What does he have to do to gain back that year of eligibility? He has to be in good academic standing, um, moving toward his degree like all of our players. Or bear with me because I don't know the process. Why was the process so long to finally yeah. come in? You know, I'm really not at liberty to say much more than I have only because it deals with, you know, some privacy issues. Um, and so really in the most succinct way, um, he's able to start practicing with us today um, as of now. And then our hope and expectation is that he'll be with us playing games next season. In the meantime, you know, like we have from the beginning of this this season, you know, we have to we have to go with who we have, and uh, that has to be our focus. We have another game tomorrow against an outstanding team, a team that um, is likely to win their conference, a team in North Dakota State that's seven and one and playing really good basketball. You know, they're one of those teams that you look up and you see them in March Madness, and you know they're part of the field and they're they're battling tooth and nail to advance in the tournament. So we have another really competitive game tomorrow, and, uh, you know, we got to move forward with that. Questions for Jay? Jay, how disappointing is this for you? I know you had so much hope and expectations to come on campus and do a lot of great things that everyone's expecting, so how deflating is this for you today? Um, you know, it's a little bit deflating, but, you know, I look at things on the brighter side, you know, being able to practice, be around my team, be around my coaching staff, be around people who have been around me since August and supporting me, caring for me. It's just, you know, it's outstanding for me. You know, they comfort me. So I, it's it's a disappointing, but, you know, I look at it as I get to practice the coaching from my uh, coaching staff and just being here with my teammates at the Sun Devil I signed last year in November. How difficult has this whole process been just waiting, not knowing? Um, you know, it's been very difficult, but I try not to think about it. I try to just look at the brighter picture of things and just come to the games to support my teammates and just hopefully things will fall in place. You know, I think that God puts me in situations for a reason, and this is one of the reasons that you've been uh, praying for. Jay, is there a sense that you're sort of relieved now that now that you know officially what's what's gone down? And yeah, you know, definitely I feel like the monkey's off my back, but, you know, that it's 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 not what I wanted, but it's right. something that I can live with, you know, playing with my teammates every day, getting coaching. But like I said before, it's, it's just something that it's great for me. What would it mean to difficult? play? What, what would it mean to actually practice with the team now that you're close friends with someone? What does it mean actually to be able to play with them in practice now? You know, actually getting getting the bond with them is something that I really wanted to do. You know, I have a lot of friends on the team, and just being around them every day, getting to know them better personally and athletically, is definitely something that I wanted to do. You know, sitting out look outside looking in just like a normal normal fan is something that I couldn't really take. So now that I'm able to get out there and uh, play with my teammates, it's, it's great. Is it difficult to to watch the games when you know? You have the ability to impact the games and, and make a difference? Um, I don't really say that it's difficult, you know. I just kind of look at it like, oh, maybe I can, you know, help here, help here. But, you know, my teammates are out there playing the best they can, you know, so I don't ever knock their hustle. So 
they're out there doing what they can. And if they, you know, if they were out, if I was out there, they would also say that I can help a little bit. But I'll never knock anything for them because they've been working hard since August 18. So. Did they ever give you any explanation of why it kind of took so long? This the process took so long. You know, I was always in the dark with the situation. You know, they wanted me to kind of try to, you know, put me in a safe house with that. You know, they didn't really want me to think about you know, the situation that I was in. So I was pretty much just in the blue and the dark. They would tell me updates, but I never really knew the full situation. The UNC level or? Mm -hmm. The full situation, yeah. They never give you like a timeline for it at all? Um, they never gave me really a timeline. You know, they were just saying that they were going through the process. You know, there's other kids in the country who are also in my uh, in my stage, you know, other kids. So they just couldn't really, you know, single handle me out and say that we're gonna give you the timeline here at this date. So. They just never really gave me a timeline. They just said when, when we're done processing things that we'll let you know firsthand. When you found out that you're eligible, there were many questions. Did you ever consider going to a junior college or, or leaving ASU to go somewhere else? No, definitely. You know, I gave my pledge to Coach Sindek and the ASU basketball staff, you know, and I was going to stick with that. You know, Coach Sindek recruited me tougher than any coach in the country did when I was a senior in high school. And I felt like Arizona State was the place for me. And JUCO never came across my mind. me a chance, you know, to learn, to learn the system, to get in shape, to become a better player, and just, you know, next year when I step on the floor, I just got to be that much better. There can't be any question on whether I'm going to be able to come in and make an impact or not. There's going to be, you know, I got to come in there and make an impact. So I just think that the, me being able to practice, you know, gets me in shape, gets the hang of things with my teammates, you know. I like to become a leader on the court, and I can't lead who cannot lead stands. So this gives me a chance to, you know, you know, build some leadership qualities out there with my teammates and let them know that they can trust me. Jay, rarely in your career have you had a stop sign put up in front of you. Does this situation make you even more hungry to step on the court and show what you can do to you and your team? Definitely, definitely. You know, this makes me want to come out and just, uh, you know, it was a learning process for me, but it just makes me more hungry. It makes me want to come out and just dominate. You know, I've always had a little chip on my shoulder, so this is an even more bigger chip for me. Yeah, it's a learning process. What, what have you learned? You know, you know, not to be immature. School, I was a little bit immature, you know, I didn't really do things that I was supposed to do. And now I'm in college, I stepped up my game to a whole new twenty level. I know uh, probably a lot of us in here follow you on Twitter. It seems like you're always asking, or people are always asking you about your eligibility status. Was, was, did a day ever pass where someone didn't didn't ask you about it? Um, no, they you know, I have, you know, people are interested in things, you know, they like to be kind of a little nosy, so no, nobody ever uh, <laughs> stopped asking me, but I always wanted to respond to them. Anything else for Jay? And you have, you have a chance to make up this lost year of eligibility as long as you uh, make progress for graduating. Then you probably know that. But yeah. is that something that I mean that's you probably are aware of? I mean, is that motivation for you going forward? Yeah, that's definitely motivation, especially with uh, academic academic standpoint. You know, if I'm on pace with my degree, I get my lost year. You know, make back up. So it just gives me an extra incentive to push it, push that ten times harder in the classroom. Broadcasting? Uh, no. You know, I, I like to do broadcasting. I like to be in front of people. I like to, you know, project my voice really well. So I think that's something that I might look into. You're off to a good start. Thanks. <laughs>